welcome to Viscount's organ tutorial series for 2019, which we're recording this year in the beautiful church of St Mary's, Whitney. I'm Francis Rumsey, organist and choirmaster here, and in this series I'll be discussing registration schemes for various styles of music with Jonathan Kingston. We're using a Viscount Regent 356 Physis based digital organ which offers a lot of registration flexibility over three manuals and pedals. We hope that you'll enjoy listening to our ideas about how to deal with music ranging from bass chorale preludes through to franc and howls. For our second tutorial in this year's series, we're going to be taking a look at Buxtehude's big G minor preludium to help us discuss ideas about how to register Baroque music of the North German school. This piece is a great example of the so-called Stilus Fantasticus and a precursor to Bach's preludes or toccatas and fugues. The organist has a lot of freedom to register contrasting episodes and there's definitely more than one way to do it. Buxtehude's instrument at the Marienkirche in Lübeck was certainly a big beast, so we don't need to be afraid of using compelling registrations here. The first section is a dramatic toccata-like movement, so Jonathan, could you say a little bit about what happens here and about how you might approach registering the um, opening of this piece? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, it's certainly a, a workout for the fingers, as you have uh, already said. And with regard to registration, I tend to use, on an instrument um, of this size, uh, choruses uh, probably coupled together up to mixture for a nice, bright um, uh, tone. And in the pedals, which, uh, which enter at bar seven, um, a fairly sturdy pedal reed in order to underpin uh, that brightness. Okay, so perhaps you could just play us the opening without the pedals then, just yeah. to hear your plenum registration. Okay. Is there any argument for using some reeds on top of the plenum there? I mean, it's a bit wild, but what do you think? Yeah, I think it depends on, on the voicing of those reeds, the size of the building uh, that your uh, instrument is located in, and, uh, and indeed it's, it's probably just up to the organist to make that call. Let's try it and see. So mm. these are the, uh, the two uh, reeds, on the eight and four on the grate, uh, along with the same on the swell, and the effect is now this. <laughs> adds an extra dimension of, uh, of excitement. Yeah, to the, it's a fiery to the stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. but great. All right, and then um, the pedals come in on uh, in bar seven. What yes. have you got registered here? Can we just hear that pedal? Sure, line? I've got it coupled to two of the departments, independent from the great, but then this pedal organ does go up to, up to mixture, which is quite useful to keep things independent. Um, and the reeds at 16 and 8. So, and then with the uh, left and right hands on top? Sure, the original opening registration now. <laughs> Wonderful, thanks. Now, the next section of the piece is uh, a short fugue. Um, and uh, I guess this could be somewhat gentler, perhaps, than what we've just had. Yeah, absolutely. After those opening fireworks, it's quite nice to have uh, a contrasting uh, fugal section here. In fact, Buxtehude's music um, often comprises short preludes, short toccatas, short fugues um, within, within its very makeup. So here, um, I'm using a choir open diapason, um, a, a great small open or something on the swell, uh, perhaps the principal would also be fine. Um, I'm balancing the, uh, the manual parts against uh, a pedal part um, uh, based on the eight foot pitch. There is no 16 foot tone uh, here, and I also have a lightly voiced uh, reed in the in the pedal line as well, just to draw prominence to the final uh, fugal voice. Mm. 
Okay, so you'll play through until just after the pedal entry. Sure. Mm. So that, that's interesting. Um, and then we've got um, a short linking section um, between this and the next brighter movement, which sort of allows us some cadence movement moments. Yes, yeah, some, some, some improvisations within those cadences, really. Uh, you have three uh, short uh, variations before the next movement, which allows this fugal section to round off. Mm. And perhaps here I would uh, reduce the organ tone down from diapasons to, uh, to flute tone. Um, and as you say, it gives the organist a chance to extemporize, if they so wish, on the uh, harmonies which uh, Brooks de Huda provides. So using the Bordens at 16 and 8, uh, and the choir flutes at eight and four, we now have this. taking the mood down and um, a, a bit of an opportunity for extemporization. That's as you right. Say. And then we move on to this um, marked allegro, dancey sort of movement, which yes. um, in this version seems to have the uh, the, the quaver movement in the in the pedals, but I've seen it in the in the left hand too. What would you yeah, be doing yeah, at this yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. Both work uh, mm -hmm. equally well. Uh, it, it, it would depend on the bravery of the player as well. <laughs> Perhaps if they are feeling particularly nimble with their feet and the, the console is facing uh, the audience, if should this be down for recital number, then obviously uh, uh, playing it on the pedals adds adds a real um, splash splash of virtuosity. Um, but it will work equally well either way. So firstly, perhaps if we deal with the, uh, the pedal theme, if you like, in the left hand. Mm -hmm. And that's a light eight and four in the left hand there against eight, four, two on the choir. Um, putting that theme now into the pedals, all I'm doing is adding a 16 foot um, a board and tone to eight and four foot principles and keeping the, the, uh, uh, the choir registration of eight, four, two identical. <laughs> either works equally well. Yeah, depending on how uh, brave you're feeling. Indeed, as you say. absolutely. Okay, and then we move on to this uh, last movement, which is in three time, quite big, I feel, quite big and grand. Yes, absolutely. Marked Largo, uh, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, just a maestro, so a majestic mm. uh, uh, tempo indication here works well. This is the final fugue, of course. So our registration is based um, on similar lines to the beginning, um, with one feature I tend to do, should your 16 foot um, uh, great um, principal or diapason be suitably voiced, it's quite nice to build the chorus on a 16 foot foundation here in order to add gravitas yeah. to this fugal statement. As long as it's not too muddy, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely, yeah. clarity is everything. And indeed on the pedals as well, provided the reeds are, are nicely voiced and, and, and nice and clear, you can bring the pedal reeds on for the, uh, for the final voice statements as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's hear a bit yeah. of this then, up okay. to where the pedals come in.
And um, then moving towards the end of this piece, I mean, it builds towards a, a final peroration, shall we say. Um, is it too corny to consider adding stops during this last page as it builds? Well, I think, as you said, to begin with, Books to Huda was used to instruments with fairly large resources, and it would be a shame not to... Um, not to just give it a go and to see and to see how it works out. We have um, on this particular organ um, some well-voiced great reeds. Um, we also have some swell reeds which we haven't brought on yet to to cap the mixture choruses. So um, why don't we keep the registration as is, and I'll bring those reeds on, and uh, we can see what the effect is. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> 